The gentleman from Florida is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, this is a very simple amendment. Uh, basically, I am taking 16 million, not billion, 16 million dollars from a part of the Department of Defense budget, which is called Defense Wide Appropriations, where there's almost 20 billion. So I'm asking you to take roughly 0 0.0008 or 0 0.08 percent from this Defense Wide Appropriations which is used for the military, other than military departments. So it's not even applicable to the Army, Navy, and Air Force, but not to military departments, but it's used uh, by the Secretary of Defense uh, for the maintenance, lease, and operation of facilities and equipment. And what I'm doing is taking these $16 million and I'm transferring it to the peer review prostate cancer research program. Funding levels, my colleagues, for this program has gone down dramatically since 2001. Right now, it's funded at $64 million. It was funded in 2001 at 100. It's continually come down and down and down. So I'm not asking to take it up to the 2001 level. I'm just asking to take it up to perhaps what it was in 2005. And I think, uh, without going into all the details, this is a very wise move because funding levels for this program has continually de decreased, yet prostate cancer is the second leading cause of male cancer-related death in the United States with an estimated 27,360 casualties just last year. There are no noticeable symptoms in early stages. The use of widespread testing, however, has led to nine out of 10 cases of early detection. And that's why this very paltry amount of $16 million in funding would be better spent for prostate cancer research for our military uh, than abroad. Uh, according to the Prostate Cancer Research Program, the PCRP, Active duty males are twice as likely to develop prostate cancer than their civilian counterparts. Research funded by the PCRP advances treatments and procedures for war fighters exposed to chemical weapons, soldiers exposed to chemical agents such as Agent Orange, and those exposed to depleted uranium. Congress has consistently supported funding levels of over 80 million annually for this important cause, yet it's only funded at 64 million. The PCRP funds innovative, high-risk, high-risk research projects supporting basic and clinical research in both the individual and multidisciplinary collaborative group settings. Funding for the PCRP enables research to advance faster and faster, to be better prepared to apply for future funding from the National Institute of Health or to advance clinical trials. Unlike any other federal cancer research program, any other, my colleagues, the PCRP award review panels are made up of the country's top researchers and prostate cancer survivors, together making sure that innovative ideas rapidly benefit all men and families burdened by this disease. In 2010, the PCRP, along with the clinical consortium, helped shepherd two new drugs through clinical trials. Both drugs are designed to prolong a man's life uh, who have prostate cancer. These drugs move through the clinical trail, trials process and have made their way to the bedside of men's dying uh, from prostate cancer to extend their lives. This public-private partnership is an incredible way to maximize productivity of government-funded and privately-funded medical research. So I ask my colleagues to support my amendment, a simple amendment to transfer $16 million from defense-wide appropriation, which is other than military, which they use it presently for maintenance, lease, operational facilities and equipment, and it represents a 0.08% reduction of this other military-wide funding. And with that, uh, Mr. Chairman, I ask unanimous consent that uh, uh, the letter to me from the Department of Defense Prostate Cancer Research Program and the Prostate Cancer F uh, Foundation be part of the record. Without objection. The gentleman's request will be covered by General Lee. And I yield back the balance. Of the gentleman yields back the balance of his time. What purpose does the gentleman from New Jersey rise? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to strike the last word. Does the gentleman pose the, uh, the amendment? Uh, I actually rise, uh, move to strike the word. The gentleman's recognized for five minutes. And to, uh, in fact, speaker, speak in uh, favor of the amendment. I've been very much involved in uh, peer-reviewed uh, prostate cancer research uh, in my home state and uh, have certainly made a commitment to that community to support additional funds and uh, we're willing to accept uh, the, the gentleman's gentleman yield uh, amendment. Yes. 
I am so thrilled that I have an amendment that, that the gentleman from Florida has an amendment that I can support. I, I join with you and uh, urge everyone to support uh, uh, the, the gentleman's amendment. Uh, gentleman from New Jersey yeah, controls the time. Uh, do, do, well, I can yield yeah. to you, Mr. Stearns. Yes. I, I thank the gentleman, and I thank uh, my gentleman. Oftentimes, I give him an amendment which he has very little time to look at. Again, this happened, but uh, I am very pleased he's supporting my amendment. And with that, obviously, I will not call for a vote. And I appreciate the appropriators uh, supporting my amendment. I yield back. Gentleman from New Jersey yields back. The question is on the amendment offered by the gentleman. From Florida. Those in favor say aye. Those opposed, no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. The amendment is agreed to.